excitement of that Kempfest goal in the first half. 25 million people in Argentina coming back from a short break. As we are doing, the crowds here aren't taking a break at all. They've kept the excitement humming and buzzing alive here throughout the half-time. Jack, I think the uh, opinion of Johan Cruyff was that uh, he wasn't too impressed with the back four of the Dutch side today. Uh, they certainly have let one or two uh, moments go by where they haven't picked their men up and uh, their attempts at an offside trap have been broken fairly easily. I would tend to disagree with you, and I think the, the Dutch back four have played remarkably well. They're playing against very, very quick players and they've done a very, very good job on them, in fact. Uh, they've, they've had one or two lax moments, but that's the way the Dutch play. And they tend to be a little bit lax at times and play what we call silly little balls across the, ba the back four. But in this game, I think they've done very, very well. I was thinking particularly of the two occasions that the captain, Passarella, has suddenly arrived there and uh, nobody's picked him up. And he's been on target, or very close to it, a couple of times. Yes, well, Passarella has been, hasn't been picked up. But it's not really up to the back four players to pick Passarella up. It's up to one of the other midfield players, or one of the forwards even, to come back and know where he is. Back four defenders can't always be responsible for picking up players from the opposing defence. All in all, I think they've done a good job. I'm still very optimistic about the good chances. I agree with Johan there. You can, they haven't really had one shot on goals yet, but they're always liable to produce one. And they have made two great chances in the first half. And in fact, the best two chances fell to the Dutch. So all in all, it's a very finely balanced game at the moment. And I wouldn't rate the Dutch off in any way, shape or form now. This is our Luis Menotti, the manager of uh, the Argentina team, who finishes his contract with the, with the side after this World Cup. May very well wind up with one of the top European teams. Goes back to the dugout to uh, open up another two or three packets of cigarettes cartoons of him out here in Argentina are always very cruel. They show him with at least four lighted cigarettes in each hand and the latest one I saw had two sticking out of his ears as well. He really does go under a lot of pressure out here because these Argent Argentine fans, they so desperately want their side to win. They've had to wait 48 years for this. Second in the first competition in 1930. Now back in the final again. One nothing up with 45 minutes between them and the World Cup. We're having a look around to see if either manager has decided to make any substitutions at halftime. But no, they're, they're starting as they finish the first half. And uh, a few more scraps of paper come down from the upper tiers of this vast bowl of a stadium here in the River Plate Stadium in Buenos Aires. And Ardiles knocks that one in the general direction of Bertoni. Back in for Ardiles. That's asking an awful lot of uh, Bertoni. No way he could get there for that. And Tapo, his expression seldom changes, though he matches Minotti cigarette for cigarette through the course of the game. Here's Kempes. And suddenly there's a gap there. Luque losing possession and Rudy Kroll comes forward for Holland with Rennie van der Kerkhoff going down the right side and Captain Passarella got a touch Tarantini was out of position at that moment throwing back to Hahn he's getting up and coming across his rep and taking it out is Ardiles who threw himself and in fact wins a free kick. Argentinians haven't in fact taken as, uh, as many dives in this game as uh, they have in some of the previous ones. Passarella, captain of Argentina, the man who thinks he's got at least one hand on the World Cup and going in hard and fast is Willy van der Kerkhoff. That was a very important Ball to win by Galvan. Tarantini. From Janssen, René van der Kerkhoff. 
Janssen getting one in the back then from Ortiz. Hahn. Hahn for Holland. Big high ball. Rennie van de Kerkhoff. Trying to get him behind Argentina. Checks, looks for the line ball now and still gets it in there. I feel I did nothing about that. The shot on for Arihan. Arihan, the bombing man whose goals have been so vital in this World Cup run of Holland. Well, this was the chance when the ball was laid back here beautifully for Arihan and it was the one that he struck and it hit Kempes and he didn't know where it had gone. He's ready to kick off with the corner. Four feet knocks that back in again, but the free kick had been given. Well, here in the first two and a half minutes of the second half, Holland showing quite positively. But that one nothing lead of Argentina's doesn't mean anything to them. Four feet. Naiskin's on. Killed on away. The head tennis finally drops the ball down to Ari Han's foot. His crawl. Crawl coming away from Ardiles. But Ardiles has it back for Argentina. Runs into trouble. Renton Brink threading his way through. And finally, it's uh, Gallego who gets it out. Call wanting it quickly for Ari Hahn. It's a loose ball. Diego's boot. Ortiz caught by Win Jansen. Naskins. The ball aimed for four feet. Oh, Green goes there. Oh, Green not a classic fullback, but he does the simple things. Four feet. Gallego. Ball through the middle at Ortiz once. When Janssen got a touch, Naiskins well read by Kempis. Put up by Hahn. Though in all conscience, I think Kempis put his head put his head down into it. But it was intelligent work by Kempis who read the situation first. He looks such a good player, Kempes, when he comes from midfield. That's the way he got his goal coming from midfield. He picks the balls up and he, he looks a magnificent sight with his hair streaming out the back of him as he runs with the ball. Kempes, the player who came on as a substitute for Hauseman in the uh, match between these two teams in the 74 World Cup fi finals. There's all green, off for Ardiles. Oh, what a bad ball. Willie van der Kerkhoff. Looks for brother René. René against uh, Tarantini. Lying header clear. Ortiz caught in possession. Really crawl fouls. In the case there, I would have said that both men going for the ball. Grisic taken while Holland were arguing and Luki is in there. And the cover job was done by Ari Hahn. And Holland almost paid for stupidity then. He got caught in one of the earlier games with Judge standing still. And then Ali got caught again there, arguing about the situation and letting the free kick be taken without having picked people up. Ransom Brink. Ortiz. Gives the ball away. Ransom Brink. Put feet across to Janssen. Ready van der Kerkhoff, that's a nicely weighted pass. But not such a particularly good pullback across the box. Luke, Rudy Kroll is there. Youngblood has come. It's Tarantini making himself first. Now Janssen. Tarantini cuts it out, that'll come down for Willy van der Kerkhoff. Ball through the middle for Rensenbrink. Off to René van der Kerkhoff. Johnny Rep is far post. Captain Passarella wins very powerfully. Now it's Kempes. Ortiz. Ardiles. 
caught by Ari Hahn. And Hahn had better watch his step. Both these uh, players can be a bit fiery. That's a break for Portlead. Oh. Hahn tidies up the bad pass for Naiskin. Got a hurry. Ari Hahn wide for Janssen. Back in for Hahn again. Little chip, and the goalkeeper's got to have that. The Argentinian midfielder closing down on the Dutch players very, very quickly. They're not going to be caught with one of the shots that the Dutch have been famous for producing. Naiskins, Willie van der Kerkhoff, or any van der Kerkhoff. Naiskins again. Skipper, Rudy Kroll. And again, he's going to look for the long one end. And Hahn's going to belt it. Having said that, Ari Hahn just released the best volley I've seen in the World Cup. The goalkeeper never saw it and it hit him and he dropped it and got it again. But he was very lucky. What a tremendous shot. No foul. Was, uh, Calego looking for the foul then. Well, Phil Yol, uh, will be watching Ari Hahn with... Uh, added interest I think from that shot onwards is Portlead off for Ari Hahn Rudy Kral Dutch battering away and uh, a fairly latish flag catches Rennie van der Kerkhoff offside from uh, referee Barreto crowd were anxious just before that and Capel, his exchange, expression seldom changes. This side of him, Jean, young Twakus, his assistant. Good touch by Luque. Janssen back to Jungblut. We've seen very little of Luque in this game yet. He, he's certainly not the player that he was in the opening game. He seems to be carrying that arm of his still, still yet, and his balance is not like it was. Well, it was Rudy Kroll penalised for the jump against uh, Mario Kempis, who's going to be the uh, all-time hero of Argentina. If the scoreline doesn't change, we're nearly ten minutes into the second half. It's one nothing Argentina, Kempis the scorer. Ortiz. Free kick for Tarantini to Passarella. Diego caught. Did well to win it back, and Janssen is in there fast. And Janssen again. Rennie van der Kerkhoff. Naiskins. Naiskins. A little pain as he got up there, and he. He had very badly bruised ribs. This is Ari Hahn. Naiskin goes away to the box. He had pain-killing injections to cure the pain in his ribs before the game. There's Hahn. Tarantini out. Luque. Ortiz goes down the left side. That was not a good ball for him by any manner of means. That's Dick uh, Naninka doing a little warming up for Holland. Interesting side if he comes on because Raymond Barreto down to our right, the linesman, the man who sent him off, but toured over when they played against uh, West Germany. Here's Willy van der Kerkhoff. The Dutch going flying in at everything now, and the Argentinians being forced to just belt the ball forward. Well, the clever football has escaped them. Bertoni is there now, and Carroll goes over. And Bertoni is away. And far post is Luque. And he loses. That was good, brave goalkeeping by Jan Jungblut. But that was a chance. A great lay across the face of the goal here. And I think Luque could have done a little bit better in fact than he did. Just a little bit late in getting to the ball. Third to corner for Ortiz. 
That was a push then by Passarella. But certainly the Dutch have started to apply the pressure in this first part of the second half. They've taken the game to the Argentinians and they're starting to look a really good side, the Dutch. All they need now is a goal. This is Gallego. By Galvan, rather. Luis Galvan. Ardila is the ball hitting him. in uh, Gallego's favour turns away to see who's going to take it they expect him to do it themselves Passarella's gone forward this is Ortiz with Janssen Janssen showing so much experience in that little little movement then against this inexperienced Ortiz he certainly looked a very good player Janssen Ortiz has had no success in this game at all Janssen's played him completely out of it Wim Janssen, uh, funny a little fella, about five foot six, five foot seven, does a job defense, midfield. And a free kick to Holland. And they're bringing uh, Dick Naninka out now. And it's Johnny Rep who's being called in. Number 16, you've had your time. Johnny Rep goes away. So it's the end of the World Cup for Johnny Rep. This is the sixth starting game. He's played all seven. Scored three goals as Dick Naninka comes on. A big man, a Joe Jordan type of fellow that's going to put a lot of pressure on Filiol. He came on to do just that against West Germany and... Uh, I'm told that he laughed a little bit too much at a decision of Raymond Barreto, the uh, linesman to our right, who was the referee that day, and got himself sent off. He served one game suspension, and he's out there now. So, Kroll is there, but wondering if Ali Hahn, who's this side of it, there's number nine, Ali Hahn, Kroll immediately looks for Nainenka. Naninka, a flower shot owner, and he's a great man for getting up there. There's no daisy when it comes to jumping. And they reckon him a Joe Jordan type of player in Holland. Yes, but it depends on how much competition the referee will let him put there. They've, not, they've tended to give three kicks on almost every challenge on any ball that's been thrown into the box up to now. And whether Naninka can get away with it, we'll have to wait and see. Certainly when he brought Johnny Rep off in the last game, it was a good move. Whether it's a good move this game, I'm, I'm not sure. Are you fair to say that Johnny Rep has had a, a disappointing World Cup by his standards, Jack? I would tend to agree, but Johnny Rep is always liable to do something a little bit special and win the game for you. But they've obviously tried to play it a different way and use it, use the big full-on crosses. His Alvin's free quick. Not clear. And now it's Tarantini, trying to go on his own. Rene van der Kerkhoff goes there with him. Go kick. Rene van der Kerkhoff, you notice how he didn't want to use that right hand to steady himself as he fell. Tarantini, strange man who is not with any club. Booker were his club, they pushed him out. And now the Football Association of Argentina pay his wages until he sorts out his future, which will be in Europe, I suspect when this World Cup is over. Tarantini is certainly a player that won't have any difficulty getting the clubs because he's a very, very good fullback. Now he skins across and we van der Kerkhoff put a whole green. Benson Brink, the through ball, and Inca fighting for it. But it's Kempes away to Ardiles. Caught in possession by some good tackling back by Willy van der Kerkhoff. Player who really does put himself about for Holland. Wim Janssen. Looking for Naninka. Too high for him. So Aldrin. Knocks this forward for Gallego. Then on for Bertoni. Adiles for Kempes. 
stopped again by Willy van der Kerkhoff. Benson Brink, Van Inker. And now it's Ardiles. Ortiz. Ardiles staying close for the one-two ball back again. Ortiz trying it on the outside. Kroll forced him to check. Back for Ardiles. Luque never was in contact then. Maninka. Kroll so cool then. But the delivered pass not a good one. Or green. A serene worst pass. 17 minutes then into the second half of the World Cup final here in the Royal Plate Stadium in Buenos Aires. The packed house happy enough at the moment that their side Argentina is in front still. 1-0. But Holland hammering back. Looking as though that equaliser could come. Del Diego gets it out. But Tony in a tussle with Portfleet. Certainly one of the young successes in this shut side the PSV club for Weinhoven if they're going to get any joy out of the big centre forward the Dutch are going to stop, have to stop playing ball through the middle of the field to him and aim to get to the dead ball line a lot more so that they can pull balls back Big long one again. Now it's Ali Hahn. And Inca and Passarella has uh, decided that Naninka is going to be his his man. Grant Chapel up off the bench, waving Holland forward. Get up behind and support the front men, is what he's indicating. Ali Hahn. Throw. For Fleet. For Hahn. And here's, here's Janssen. Ace gets bravely in for that. Benson Brink has an offside flag against Naninka, who was slow coming out. It's referee Ramon Barreto. And the excitement is that La Rosa is being warmed up for Argentina. Rossa who's been doing uh, Ardiles' job. And the feeling that uh, his arm, Minotti, may feel that he wants a little bit more in midfield. Here's Hahn for Holland. That's behind Naninka. So Green is there. Such a bad clearance. Willy van der Kerkhoff. Ward Fleet. Branson Brink. Now they're looking for Nanginka, and he was pushed away. The referee allowed a blatant foul on Nanginka there to go one punish inside the box. Incredibly bad. And he ignored it completely. Omar La Rosa wanting to come on, and it's Ardiles who's coming off. Ardiles, who wasn't fit the earlier part of the week. And Ardiles, who took so much into this game, but he leaves to a lot of applause from uh, the fans here in Buenos Aires and Omar La Rosa comes on for his second outing in the World Cup played in the last game against Peru a popular player from uh, River Plate Independiente sorry And promptly, La Rosa getting a touch. Kroll. Willy van der Kerkhoff and Tarantini is there for Argentina. Rocked out of it by René van der Kerkhoff. Now Janssen gets it on to René van der Kerkhoff. It comes Passarella. Well, it's either a free kick or a... a Dutch throw in. And it is a free kick. Uh, Subir warming up for Holland. Subir, one of the great cap players. 
fact, he's only five caps behind the record holder, George Van Heel. And he's a defender. Willy van der Kerkhoff. Maninka couldn't get there against Galvan. Now, Ogui. That's a good ball. Offside was Luki by a mile, but they let Bertoni go. Rudy Kral is with Bertoni. Moves the ball in for Kempes, who's held back, and referee lets it go, and he starts the post. Well, that is the most remarkable decision. Advantage you can give, but surely not that much, Jack. Well, he still had the opportunity to get a shot in on his left foot, and the referee let him go as long as he could, and he still nearly put it in. But there was an offside decision, and that linesman over there let the Argentinians go when Kempes must have been 10 yards offside. So, the crowd living on their nerves a little bit at the moment because they sense that Holland could be here with an equaliser with the pressure that's going on. There's 22 games, 22 minutes of the game left. And still Holland looking for for something in the net. And he had caught in possession. Willy van der Kerkhoff for Janssen. Slips away from Ortiz. The ball back nicely for Willy van der Kerkhoff. And the Dutch orange shirts gathered around the goal of Filiol. Rudy Kroll, captain of Holland. It's a beautifully flighted ball. Naiskin is faced by Old Green. And La Rosa just ran straight into uh, Johan Naiskin. The free kick. Up into the box comes the tall boy, Ernie Brantz. Argentine and a dragging back three, six, seven, plus the goalkeeper. I'm looking as though he might try and bend it. Got a good twist. Naninka. Hastings. Off the top and over the over the bar. Corner. And these are anxious moments for the Argentine fans here in Buenos Aires. Those flags are not being waved at the moment. There's no paper being thrown in the air. There's not too much whistling going on. They are as anxious as that goalkeeper, Filio, and the Argentine players. René van der Kerkhoff, short. René van der Kerkhoff again. Ortiz stops him, and there's nowhere for him to go. He looks for a free kick. It was never on. It's got to be a throw into Holland. Well, he's got the free kick. Now, if you push the ball away and then uh, fall down, it seems you get free kicks. All green for La Raza. Quickly in was Ari Hahn. Is Dick Naninka. Willy van der Kerkhoff. For Cleet. Willy van der Kerkhoff. Janssen and Argentine totally pinned down now. Naninka up there. But no real power on the header. And Tarantini tries to get Argentina forward again. Kempes. Foul against uh, Wim Janssen. Free kick taken and Ernie Brandt sends that one back. There was only Ernie Brandt uh, that was alive. It was another free kick taken quickly that Larry caught the Dutch flat footed. But all in all, it would be unfortunate for the Dutch to lose this game because the Dutch ah. are looking the team well capable of winning it. Stretch wide then. Renton Brink. Flying header gets it away. Luque caught in possession. La Rosa. And Bertoni allowed to make a break on the far side. Rudy Kroll goes with it. But there's no support coming up and Kroll judged that to a nicety. And all this time, Holland waiting to get uh, Subir on. Subir, another who figured in the 74 final. Signs are that they may be thinking in terms of bringing uh, Wim Janssen off, but that's something we'll have to wait and see. Ari Hahn. Ari Hahn still in there. Trying to win that ball. And the free kick given in Argentina's favour. 
And it's Wim Janssen who's been called away. Wim Janssen and an orthodox right-sided, an orthodox right-sided uh, defender. Surbia, Wim Surbia plays now for the uh, Schalke club. Wim Janssen goes away out of the game. Second highest caps in uh, Dutch football history. This will be his 60th appearance for his country. That just puts him four behind George Van Hale, the most cap man. I can't understand that substitution because Janssen is doing very, very well and he's got up and support his boys and great. I can't see how Sylvia is going to increase that. Maybe they're looking for the extra hate from him. As Naiskin throwing himself. I think if he might have, if he stayed on his feet then, well, perhaps he, he could. The impetus was carrying him on. I don't think Brent there was any way he could have stayed on his feet there, You, He was going flat out to get into that box. The Dutch will always try and get into the box. They play the ball there and they try and get after it. That's probably why they're one of the greatest nations is getting penalty kicks. But this free kick could be interesting now because the Argentinians are certainly starting to look a little bit anxious. Is this going to be something from Abby Hahn or Robbie Rensenbrink? Rensenbrink, joint top scorer in the competition. An anxious wall of Argentinian players. Is there a tiny gap for Rensenbrink to exploit? Right into the uh, cut, cradled arms of Filiol. I think they're standing on Filiol. Fractionally more than 15 minutes. And they're going to bring off uh, Ortiz, Argentina. Bringing off Ortiz. And it is the great Rene Hausmann who's come on. Getting involved immediately. Ernie Brandt covering at the back for Holland and Naninka can he get in here now little touch and the ball going away off Tarantini no apparently Naiskin's in fact got the header in I must say I thought that uh, Tarantini put that ball out he's gone down with uh, delayed concussion Naiskin's is stretched out altogether actually Naiskin's was going in on it and he was headed by Tarantini and Tarantini went down what we call delayed concussion with about five seconds after the actual event. I think he maybe thought that the referee was going to punish him and give a penalty there. Maybe he could have done because he certainly took the player. Well, Tarantini certainly in, uh, in some difficulty and as Argentina have used up both their substitutes, they will hope that he gets back on his feet fairly quickly. The substitution of Ortiz didn't surprise me one little bit. He's probably been the worst Argentinian player of the whole lot. He's never contributed really anything to the games that he's played in at all. Well, as if to encourage Tarantini, the noise swells up from this beautiful River Plate Stadium again. Flags all around the ground. It's about time that the Dutch released one of their famous shots to get themselves back into this game. They certainly have that many on target, just the one by Ali Hahn in the first, well, in the, late and early in the first this half. But they could do with one now because they certainly don't deserve to be a goal down in this game. Nice little touch then with Kempes saying that Naiskins was all right. Kempes playing for Valencia and Naiskins for Barcelona know each other pretty well in Spanish football terms. Tarantino with his hand on his head might be there for next season. Willy van der Kerkhoff down. Ari Hahn turning out of trouble against La Rosa. Galvan. Going just one yard too far. Here's Nanin Canal. Subia getting his first touch. Long one, the pressure on Ogin. But now La Rosa calling for it this side of the park. No way. Well, the swings and roundabouts. That's uh, the line the line's been line's been been wrong. The linesman on that side is running through the form. Another one where nowhere near offside in line with us exactly. And he gave it again. 
Ernie Brandt's getting up. And in all this, Gallego is playing a storming part in defence alongside Galvan. That's Paul Green hitting a long one out, the ball out of play. Argentina hardly coming out of their last two-thirds of the park. And more agitation on the Argentine bench. As Willy van der Kerkhoff back as last man. Maninka to challenge, got a good touch. This will come to Brinsenbrink. And again, once again, the cover job was from Galvan. Argentine backs to the walls, very much so. 12 minutes left, and the crowd sensing it, knowing that the World Cup is within the grasp of their team. That one vital goal scored by Mario Kempis. As Holland just cannot find a crack in the armour, a, a way through. Holland coming here with a 14 goals scoreline in their matches so far. They've swapped several rows for just one at this moment. Paul Green for Argentina. La Rosa. Hausimann. Interesting to see the numbers 9 and 10 as Hausimann out on the touchline, number 10. There he is. These two players who swapped places in 1974 in Germany when the teams last met Holland and Argentina. Free kick to uh, Holland. Or There's some four, five hundred Dutch supporters out there somewhere, but the encouraging noises are totally swallowed up in the volume of sound coming up from the Argentine fans. Naninka. Back to Subie. Offside, Ernie Brandt. But Naninka got a whack just before that, which again the referee hadn't spotted. This referee has not seen a lot of things that have happened off the ball, in fact. I think he's been a little bit leaning towards the Argentinians in this game. He's certainly not let the Dutch away with anything. Naninka putting pressure on. Hans Hedda, Naiskin. But Paul Green tries to send La Rosa away. And La Rosa is moving. And Hausimann's gone on a run down the right side. The ball, in fact, goes to Bertoni. Now look at him. And finally, it was Rudy Kroll, it had to be, who just nicks that back quietly to his goalkeeper. His positional sense really is superb, Rudy Kroll. Naninka, aiming in the general direction of René van der Kerkhoff. Tarantini, deserved that, shielding the ball with his back. Less than ten minutes to go. And Argentina got a free kick for that. So he wasn't, uh, he wasn't playing them, but no, they don't, they get the try. Okay. Guaranteed. Oh, a terrible boot away. Here's Rinsenbrink. Coming in from the left side is Portfleet. Are oh, they going to look for the big one? No, it comes to Arnie Hahn and Argentina come out. And Rene van der Kerkhoff might be in. That looks useful, Maninka! It is! It's 1-1! One, one. What a magnificent cross that was by René van der Kerkhoff. Everyone thought he was going to have a shot. And in fact, he clipped his ball beautifully, just slightly, just beautifully to the far post for the big lad to come in and knock the ball in the net. Meninka. Great goal and certainly the just deserve it. There's only the sixth match. They appear to be giving it a fourth lead. I must say, I thought it was the number 18, the big number 18, and Inka who scored it. As Rennie van der Kerkhoff gets in there again. 
And Holland are looking now for a winning goal, perhaps. Rene van der Kerkhoff. Away. The Argentinians are certainly looking very ragged. They have been doing this for about the last 20 minutes. Look very ragged. The back four have been under a tremendous amount of pressure. And have survived it. Let's see if they can survive the last 10 minutes. Well, it's Rene van der Kerkhoff. Pushed away by Tilio. Neskin's in. Was Luki back in defence? His hard. Offside flag up against Maninka. And the cons consensus opinion now was Port Fleet. Uh, Port Fleet and Maninka attacking the same ball. And it looks as though Port Fleet got the touch. We said earlier on that the Dutch had to get the balls and play them in from the touch line. That's the way they got the goal. But they're still insisting on punching these balls up at angles in at the big centre forward. And he's been caught outside many, many times. Free kick given to Argentina. Kempes caught. It's now got up on the scoreboard that Maninka was the goal scorer. No handball given against uh, Willy van der Kerkhoff. Ball across in for Naiskin. And he still moves. Maninka looking for return ball. Naiskin was taken out very solidly then by Passarella. He's ready van der Kerkhoff uh, looking for a little... Uh, little grudge return then Naiskins is still down injured Ari Hahn drawing the referee's attention to it William van der Kerkhoff had a spell playing in the, at the back of the Dutch uh, as a centre half and then suddenly he started to appear on the right hand side and he's causing them all sorts of trouble out there again but he's a very hard player and he goes in for the ball all the time not always fairly either well they're asking for Assistance, medical treatment from Naiskins. Who's taken some really bad knocks out there. Since we took our dealers off the Argentine, have not really looked very, very much in control of the midfield. Yes. The boy they brought on certainly isn't of the quality. Well, Ernest Happel, if that could be so-called excitement, that is what he's expressing. Beside, back in the game, 1-1, the fans of Argentina, and the pressure clearly on Cesar Luis Menotti, the manager of Argentina. Less than five minutes of this game to go game to go into extra time if the scoreline does, does not change. Naiskins seems really to be in a lot of pain down there. I would suspect that Holland don't really want to hold up at this point, Jack, because they were really putting it together and putting the uh, putting the frighteners on Argentina. Yes, the uh the whole business of stopping the game now was certainly against the Dutch. They would want to keep the pressure on and keep the pace up because they've got the pace of this game now. And they're dictating the whole way it's played. The Naiskins, of course, the club doctor is now out there looking at Naiskins. The club doctor has been treating Naiskins with pain-killing drugs for, what, nearly a fortnight out here now. So this would appear that he's got some bleeding in the nose, which could indicate some... Uh, head injury rather more than the uh, than the increase of pain from the chest injury which has kept him out of the competition for the last two or three games so he does seem to be all right again now and that will certainly help Holland because they've used both their substitutes and Inker and Subir are both on with Rep and uh, Winjansen both off so there's no room for any more substitutions He's had a tremendous game, these kids, and he's one of these players that will all... You can understand why he scores as many goals as he does, because he's always going in there for the ball. There's Kempers, as the way closes up for him, and he goes over the leg of 
Arihan. And the as Kempis is going to try a fairly longish shot and he got some speed on it, he got some power on it, but it went wide. Three minutes, less than three minutes, two and a half minutes to go. In this last two and a half minutes, Jack, can you see anybody breaking through? Or are we going to go into extra time? I can't really see him breaking through now. I think they're both settled for the fact that it will be a, a draw at full time. Is Betoni. It's a very awkward ball and Jungblood ready quickly. But if anyone was going to break through and get a goal in the last minute, I would back the Dutch. Well, that was good play by Galvan. Ogrin. La Rosa. Hauseman caught in possession. La Rosa feeds it back to Hauseman. And a very firm challenge from Willy van der Kerkhoff. Wins the ball back for Holland. A fourth lead. And it's Galvan again. And he was fouled further back, and a free kick is given to Argentina. On my watch, about a minute to go. We're obviously going to have some stoppage time. There have been one or two lengthy stoppages. The last one for the injury to Naskins. And the free kick hoisted up there. And Passarella tried to get there and Naninka had gone with him. And immediately Naninka tends to lose his rag a bit and comes out quickly. Naninka. Hoiked out as far as Kempes. Kempes, and that's Willy van der Kerkhoff again. Tremendous player, this Willy van der Kerkhoff. Came into the Dutch side after his brother Rene. Has two fewer caps, one fewer goals, but he is some player. The Brook done very well at van der Kerkhoff. Served the country tremendously well. But the, the whole Dutch pattern changes from minute to minute and we can't really seem to pick up who's playing where and that was hitting the first from Rosenberg good gracious me Argentina very nearly played the penalty for a bit of sloppy play on the far post in injury time here there he is number 12 Robbie Rosenberg who didn't see out the game in uh, well, that's how close winning the World Cup is. You rentably got in on the blind side and hit the post with a little pull back across the goal. Han and Naninka following it through. In injury time in the normal 90-minute period, Argentine fans are still a little stunned. Holland still there, and the time ticking away. We're into the second minute of injury time and well we've we've got the we've got extra time to be played now the teams are allowed to go towards the far touch line have a little discussion in the middle of the field so 1-1 one, one, and extra time this the drama this the pull on the nerve ending as the respective managers come down. So while the players take a short break, we'll also take a break here in uh, the River Plate Stadium and send you back to Bryan in London. In fact, while the players take that break, we'll stay with the pictures in the River Plate Stadium. But Johan Cruyff, you uh, showed great relief, obviously, and delighted to see that uh, Dutch goal go in. A much better second half for Holland, wasn't it? That's what I said at halftime. 
expected a, a great second half because the last three games were like this. Yes. And I enjoyed it very much. Now. Yes. In fact, you were just at the start of the second half, you thought that uh, maybe in the last 20 minutes that Holland would really turn it on. Uh, why do you think in the last 20 minutes in particular, which is in fact what they did? No, if you know, this, if you know the, the players who were there, the 16, there was the only possibility. The Nanija has got to go in, this, this, this uh, Brands has got to go up front, because you saw the first half already that they, in the air, they weren't too cool. No. So there was the only possibility that we were discussing already when they started the second half. Yes. Where do you think, Brian, the, the balance of play now uh, is in this uh, World Cup final? Do you think it swung Holland's way? Uh, it, it had done up until the final whistle, and I think it'll now even out again. Uh, I don't think the Argentinians will, you know, want to lose, obviously, an extra time. I think they made the typical Italian mistake of having got a goal, then absolutely trying to pack midfield, going on the defensive, and they handed the initiative to the Dutch. They took it, because that's their style also, and they earned that goal. Yes. And everybody watching in England tonight will be delighted they got it, because they're very, very popular. Yes. Kevin, any thoughts? I think when uh, Ardilis went off, that's when Argentina started to lose a grip of the game. La Rosa came on cold, he couldn't get control of the midfield. And from then on, it's been one-way traffic. And I think, in the end, the Dutch were unlucky not to get the extra goal yes. they needed to win it. Ernst Happel there, uh, doing a lot of talking to his men. Uh, and the Argentinians taking a little bit of refreshment as well there. Paddy, where do you think the game, how do you see this game going now? I'll tell you something, if I was Ernest Happel, I'd be very disappointed actually that the final whistle has, had gone. He would have been delighted for the, just to continue on for the next half hour and not stop the game because as Brian said, it might change a little bit. Although it hasn't because the Dutch have been magnificent in that half. But you never know. No. While, while we are still waiting for the game to restart, I'm sure Johan would love to see that equalising goal again by Port Fleet. Um, Good build up here again. Beautiful cross. That's the way to beat defences, Brian, when they rush out to you, uh, trying to play offside. It was knocked sideways, the ball was. It was a type of ball, look at it. And it, it played several of the Argentinians out of the game. That's a magnificent cross. The and that, that's why the lad was brought on to do just that. The man who played him on side was La Rossa. Strangely enough, a midfield player. But I think that shows you, Kevin, the pressure that they've been under really, the Argentinians all this half, doesn't it? They surrendered the initiative, Pat. Yeah. I don't know if I don't know. I wouldn't agree with that. Well, they were forced they sur to surrender, surrender, maybe. They were forced to surrender the initiative because the Dutch have gone from strength to strength the second half. I'm, I've, no. I, I I've thought, not seen him. I saw that the Dutch have played very intelligent because normally you've got to go through the normal game. They've got a lot of people in the midfield. You can lose a lot of them. That's why Holland has played long balls. Well, I think we go back now for the start of extra time and rejoin Hugh Johns. Well, as you join us, the captains out in the centre of the field discussing with uh, the referee and only one linesman. I don't know what Mr. Barretto is getting involved in that for. He tends to want to be involved in everything. It looks very much as though uh, Daniel Passarella has won the toss for Argentina. And Kempis uh, and Mayskin uh, having a little chat there to decide that they personally will exchange shirts at the end of this game. As we are ready to go now into the first period of extra time. Holland attacking the goal away to the left. And we're off. 15 minutes of extra time, half an hour of hard grind for these players to go through. And Jack, immediately I have to ask you, what is extra time like in a World Cup final? You would know. Very, very hard, and you'll probably find one or two of the players will start to chip off on a little bit of crump and a little bit of tiredness. Both sides have, uh, both sides have used their two substitutes. So if anybody gets a knock or a bump now, that extra time is going to have to be played out with reduced forces. This is La Rosa, one of the Argentine substitutes, and this is Hausman, the other one. Taken by Portfleet. Still a lot of confusion here as to whether Portfleet and Anenka scored the goal, but it seems from uh, our desk in London it's quite clearly Portfleet. Now it's hard. 
And that ball stood up a little bit for him as he knocked it across for Suvier. Oh, who's going forward and now Naninka. Ball hard and low for Rensenbrink. Neskins. But Kempis now for Argentina. Offside flag for Tony and the uh, yellow flag of Mr. Barreto this time. And shows the thumbs up to his referee as well. It's interesting to see that Rudy Kroos has pushed up into midfield and have one of the Van der Kirk comes back into the back four. It's a good idea that because he's a strong lad and he, he might get up on a cross or two. This is Suvia with the throw in. A straw. Now Hahn. Suvia. Over Nanking. Naninka was up well. Now here's Portfleet. Willy van der Kerkhoff, the return ball to Portfleet. Curling it, that's too close to the goalkeeper. Much too close. Kempes stopped by Hahn. Naiskins is there. Kempis gets back in with a challenge. The Argentines don't seem to, at the moment to be able to put together any sort of a pattern between the back four and the front players. And they're just relying on the quick break by Kempis. The other two midfield players are contributing very little to this game at all. Well, it was backing in by Naninka then, looking to me rather more though, as uh, though Galvan gave him a little nudge in the back. Argentina, who had relied or hoped for so much from the support of their fans, and there haven't been too, there hasn't been a tremendous amount of noise for them for some little time. That's Passarella. Passarella, the captain. Garantini. Tempes. La Rosa. Subir stopping uh, Bertoni unfairly. Bertoni. Uh, making it quite clear to the referee that he is in very considerable agony. There's a couple of Argentinians, La Rosa leading the run, head for Suvier. I haven't seen an Argentine player roll over and over like that since 1966. Well, it became quite famous for it. And La Rosa is getting a yellow card for having a go at Suvier. Meanwhile, the Argentine bench is looking a bit anxious about Bertoni. The fans anxious, looking down from their high perches here, wondering if they've now got to dip into their pocket on Monday when, uh, tomorrow, when tickets for a replay will go on sale. If there's no further score or the game results, in those scores, Cesar, Lewis, Minotti, the manager of Argentina there, and then Tappel of it all to do again with their teams on Tuesday. And here's the free kick for Argentina. Kempes. And that was nicked away then by Kroll. France did well. Now it's uh, Nanika, rather. Now it's Portley. Oh. Uh, that was La Rosa. He's just picked up a yellow card. I have a strong feeling that if he hadn't picked up a yellow card 30 seconds earlier, he'd have picked up one then, which means really he ought to have gone. That's really the first thing La Rosa's contributed to this game up to now in midfield. Certainly not a quality player at all. Rudy Kroll shipping it in. Nanka gets up, didn't get a full touch. And Kempes comes away. Nothing much on that ball. Subir in no difficulty over there. When you think of some of the football that the Argentinians played against the Peruvians, you wonder how they managed to score six goals having watched them in this game because there's, there's nothing difficult about them at all. 
Here's Willy van der Kerkhoff. Charged down by uh, Alguin. Now, uh, pull across the box for Kempis to knock out. The roar above the stadium just now. The One of the big jets going into the main airport nearby. Kempis brought down by Fortfleet. And that's going to be another yellow card, I'm pretty sure. Yes, that's Fortfleet. I don't really know where Kempis thought he was going there. He played a ball and was intending to go after it and went and went and, and dived, really. It was, a, it was a bad tackle, but he wasn't going anywhere. The ball had gone miles away in front of him. And he gets the foul, he gets the book, booking for uh, four feet. And Jungblood has to look around to see what might come from this free kick. So Passarell is going to drive one. Well, the ambition of Daniel Passarella matching that of uh, Nelinho of Brazil. But not with quite the same venom. Seven minutes into this first period of extra time. No improvement on the score. Still 1-1. One, one. And the cheers and roars and the waving of flags now come up again from the pack ranks of Argentine spectators. Man losing to four fleets. But winning a throw-in. La Rosa, the number 12, looks for Housey Man. Smooth work again by Rudy Kroll. The paper confetti around uh, Jungblut. Ah, I'm getting this back to Van der Kerkhoff, Willy Van der Kerkhoff. Threading his way through. And the way closes up as Old Green comes, comes in. Old Green angrily pushing off Kirk, Van der Kirchhoff. Daniel Passarella. It's one of the highest yet. As another big jet roars overhead. Both these sides wanting to get off the ground. One goal could do it. Just about halfway through this first period of extra time. Still 1-1. One, one. Willy van de Kerkhoff. And he prants for the header. Tarantini knocks it out. Souvier misses, but Brantz is there. Whistles of anger from the crowd. Well, if I was Minotti, I would be praying that this game goes to... Uh, a replay on Wednesday to get his team sorted out a little bit because they're not looking like a team at all, the Argentinians at the moment. And, uh, Willy van der Kerkhoff. Tuesday, in fact, the replay, if it's necessary. So Holland are pushing forward now, looking for a goal that could clear it up. Here's Naninka. Couldn't control it, needs to go right. And he hand offside. A ball from Kempes picking up La Rosa. Luque and his marker, Ernie Brantz. He's done a very good shadow job. Scoreline, 1-1. One, one. Green. Grohl sticking with him. And Hahn helping out gives the corner away. And the orange shirts gather back from goalkeeper Jungblut. Looking a little anxious as uh, Hussiman takes the corner very quickly. Wide across the goals. Was uh, Willy van der Kerkhoff who got it away. That's enough to his brother Rene. Throw in to Holland. Yes. 
some four minutes of this first period of extra time left. As Argentina now come forward again. Kempes. And might drop to Hussiman. He looked for a foul. He never was going to get it. That was well won back. Savan. Here's Hussiman. Is this the winner? No. Hussiman quick back on his feet. No foul. Surely. Nope, it wasn't given, but it wasn't a foul anyway. As Holland comes back again. That's a break in. Infield. For Nathan. That's a bit too long for Willy van der Kerkhoff. He went hard and fast for it. Now Tarantini looking for uh, another booking. As Willy van der Kerkhoff went past him. Renny Hausmann could have won the game there for the Argentines. He's in a tremendously good position and he opted to shoot from a very narrow angle again. The sort of ball that the Dutch would have played across the face of the goal. Because the Argentinians on that break had players up there and a, a ball across the face would have almost certainly have brought the goal. So the ball out of play. Twelve and a half minutes of this first period of extra time gone. Rennie Hausemann on the side of the field still wondering if he's if he's blown the chance of winning the match for Argentina that's a free kick given in Luki's favour short by back Gallego to La Rosa he wasted Rennie van der Kerkhoff now caught in possession by Bertoni off to La Rosa the foul on Luki by Ernie Brandt and uh, get a strong suspicion temperature is which has been pretty high out there all the game is beginning to soar now certainly the fans are standing up around the stadium waving their fists cheering Argentina on as Tarantini takes this and what a bad one it was Rene van der Kerkhoff for Holland Benson Brick Suvia offside Portley started his run a little too early Galvan to take the free kick no in fact he leaves it for Passarella Suvia and Bertoni and the ball in for Kemper has got a score John Brown has done it and it's kicking into the net credit for that but Kempes is going to play it it's 2-1 Argentina with about 14 seconds left Kempes again coming through from midfield running onto a ball going on showing how strong he is on it getting his shot in just before Rundgren can get to him getting a lucky reflection and watching the ball crawl over the line just watch it crawl over the line Tremendous goal. Unfortunately, they don't deserve it. Crescendo and cannon back off the walls of the stadium. In fact, we've got half time in extra time. It's 2 1 Argentina, and it's, it's half time in extra time. Let's see what the panel has to say about it now. I have, I have to remind you that the uh, marvellous film Touch of Class with Glenda Jackson will now be shown 35 minutes later than build. That, believe me, is worth waiting for, and so too is the second half of uh, extra time here. How do you fancy it now, Brian? Um, the goal he scored was, was a magnificent goal for determination, keeping his head. Uh, even when tackles were coming in thick and fast, he stayed on his feet, which is important. He could have been looking for penalties. 
um, but he wasn't. He stayed on his feet and he deserved the final break where the goalkeeper came out and it bobbed away from him. Right, back to you, Hugh. Well, another incredible 15 minutes of football to be completed. Holland have come off the floor once in this game. Can they do it again? Argentine fans say no, absolutely. Well, the only person that was going to win the, the game for the Argentinians was, in fact, Kempis. He's the only one that's looked really positive running from midfield, and he scored the two goals from that position. Mario Kempis, this incredibly talented footballer, Marito, they call him in uh, Argentina, little Mario, the, the boy they've loved in Argentine football all for so many years. Top goal scorer in Spain for the last two seasons. A regular and top scorer for Rosario before he went there. Got many important goals. And here goes Luque. And the free kick's been given. Free kick's been given. On that break. So Holland. Here's Nanenka, Rene van der Kerkhoff. Argentina fighting for everything as Passarella backing down on Rene van der Kerkhoff. Tarantini losing. And Passarella helping him out. And any clearance will do. Kempes, offside by at least five yards is Luque. And the referee is after Luque for having a crack at uh, Jumblut. The referee who's had occasion to book, what is it, four players so far. The ball's in the crowd and the Argentinians don't want to give it back. As much time as can quick off the clock as possible. They want now. Millions of Argentines all over this country, at home, in cafes, in bars, are going as mad as the crowds here at this moment. And tonight it's going to be fiesta time all over Argentina if Holland don't get back in there. Offside flag from uh, Ramon Barreto. And Holland have got 12 minutes left. Dubier, that's a bad header. Come down to Bertoni. And Argentina looking for a third goal, which would really wrap it up. That's a foul by La Rosa. And Hahn didn't like it one little bit. Kemper's afraid out there. And Dari Hahn goes back up the field for Holland. The free kick taken by Kroll. Maninka up. It's Passarella getting it away, and all green now La Rosa. And that was Hahn. Solidly into La Rosa. And now La Rosa decides that he is very badly hurt. And they lift him back to his feet. Well, I don't blame Naskin one tiny bit for that. La Rosa asked for everything he got. Having got it, now he's trying to waste time and the Dutch are clustered around him and the fans are roaring their anger at Holland and meantime La Rosa is back on his feet now there's the colour and the excitement of an Argentine crowd in full full chorus looking forward some 10 minutes from now when if there's no change in the score Argentina will win the World Cup That was a foul. And a free kick to Holland. And Holland desperately must pull something out of the bag in the next two or three minutes. Kroll oh, belting that long. Was Passarella climbed very well. Here's Bertoni for Argentina. 
Willie Van de Kerk on back to it. Shoved him out of the way. Fritzing. And the crowd getting more and more angry with Holland. Tempest leaving it. In fact, everybody wants to leave the free kick now. Carantini will take it. Passarella knocks it forward for Kempes. Can he get a hat-trick? Kempes, who will uh, have the freedom of the country for those two goals. Holland pushing forward again. Time running away from them. Less than, less than ten minutes to go. Another free kick to Argentina, which will give them a few more seconds breathing space. Free kick from Passarella. Aiming for Hausemann. And he's got the length to get round there. And again, he tried to do too much. But at that speed, I'm sure there wasn't really very much more he could do. He had to go all the way on his own. He's tight to the line. He could perhaps have released it earlier, but no. He was unlucky. Tremendous turn of pace. As Maninka challenging. Holland hasn't got the time to worry as Lucky cuts through. There was an offside though. Lucky! And young blood has made the save, which is total justice. Because there was a player offside before that. The referee decided he wasn't interfering with play. But Lucky could have wrapped it up then. Young blood kept him out. But there's less than, there's eight minutes left. And that goal would certainly have sealed it up. It's still 2-1. Kempes will take another corner. Hasevan in the box. Luke is in there. Bertone's in there. Passarella's ready to come in far post. Kicked away by Willy van de Kerkhoff. Holguin caught in possession. And here's Rentenbrink. Big long one across field. Ernie Brandt. Flies away from one tackle. In for Nanenka. He's all right. Looking far post. It was Naiskins who came flying in to get on the end of it. The referee waving play on as Argentina gather all the troops back. Willy van der Kerkhoff. Ernie Brandt's up to fight for it. The header back in again. Port Fleet in. There's Rudy Kroll. Kroll, the short ball in to Niskin. Hard and low on the ground. And yet another Argentine down, just outside the box. He suddenly decided to fall down. I don't know why, there was no one near him. He just decided to fall down and have a rest. And I bet the referee has to stop the game because there's no way they're going to play on without him. No, that's the captain, Passarella. He's got a bit of cramp. The referee is waving the game on. There's Just about six minutes to go. Argentina still winning it. 2-1. Luque. And now Luque will go down. And the referee has given the free kick. And nobody's taking any notice of Luque. Except uh, Naiskins, who just stood over him and said, why don't you be a big boy and get back on your feet? The free kick is to Argentina. Kempes is placing the ball. La Rosa takes the free kick for Tarantini. Bertoni. Kempes. He's got the acceleration. He's got the shot. Bertoni. Yes. It's 3-1 and that's the World Cup. Incredible player this campus. 
his strength, his running power, all the way. here in the River Plate Stadium. And there's no way that Holland can get back into this now. Four minutes to go. Argentina in the boss seat at 3-1. Wetzelbring knocks it in. Garantini belts it away. That's Kepler for Luque. Crow coming back to Lupe. And Rudy Crow rocks it into Youngblood. And the crowds are just not going to sit down or stop cheering. Many of them up in front of us. With La Rosa, deliberate handball again. But it doesn't seem to matter anymore now. The result that every Argentinian forecast is coming through. Argentina are going to win the World Cup. Tarantini getting it in front of Filo. Filo being impeded, not being allowed to get the ball away. I shouldn't think the players can hear the referee's whistle. I certainly can't. I'd be very surprised if... Uh, if many of you can actually hear me at home. Well, I think those pictures tell the story. La Rosa. And here's Hausiman. And there goes Bertini. And they're looking for Luque. About two and a half minutes of this game to go. And the crowd singing the Mundial song. They skin in. Oh. Ronnie Van der Kirchhoff, no foul given. Tarantini recovers remarkably well. And a shot here from Neskins that was charged, charged down. Now it was Portley. And Crow got a hurry. Because Kempers nearly stole the ball away from him. Sobier. Hard. Holland fighting to the end. Surely all they can hope for now is for a slightly more respectable scoreline. But Tony standing on the ball. Off for Luque. For a, not much more than 90 seconds as... Luke goes down again. Rip lines on that side uh, from Austria waves everybody away. As Willy van der Kirchhoff comes forward. Just a minute left. Just one minute for the whole of Argentina to sit on their seats. before rising and blowing the top right off the stadium. There's the roar of fans coming up again, the waving of the flag. This will be the first time in the history of the competition that Argentina have won the World Cup. 48 years ago they came second now here they are, 3-1 up. Ernie Brandt gets that ball in. And Ernie Brandt's in there again to hoik it in. And the captain, Passarella, gets it clear. And Kemp is the scorer of those two vital early goals. 
Hops it away to Luque. Luque to Kempe, but Luque, handball. Well, they held the world uh, basketball championship here in Buenos Aires earlier this week. I think Luque could have been in the middle of it. Time is up on my watch. We're in stoppage time now. As Holland still bravely come in there, trying to tidy up the score line. As Hahn. Maninka throws himself in the box. No penalty. Subia whacks it in there again. Maninka up. As referee. Ends this game. Sergio Ganella ends it. And the crowds rise. And hurl flags in the air. 3-1, Argentina have won the World Cup. And the noise is absolutely deafening. Cesaro Esmanotti, the technical director of the side. There they are, champions of the world, 1978. Well, those pictures tell their own story. And all the anger and the bitterness of the dying stages of the game. Obvious in a cup tie of this, a cup final of such tremendous proportions. Now forgotten. As players are hoisted on the shoulders of their colleagues. The cameramen dive in for those important pictures that are going to flash around the world. The world having sat at home on television and seen it all. The drama and the excitement of an Argentine side staging the competition for the first time and winning it.